Most people do tend to go for a piss at that point. <laughs> or uh, go to wash the face or shred the legs. Mine doesn't say go to the toilet, so mine's unique. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's cut that bit out. Right, that is the non specific treatment script of complete mind therapy, which makes up chapters 21 and 22 of my book that's on the digital takeaway. Obviously, you get the audio, so you can hear it with the voice tones, pauses, wearing Betty Commands at. There are made notes that will refer to. Tomorrow, because in fact I don't want you to see them notes too much now because I want to check what people have uh, taken it in rather. I can truly and sincerely say that any element of NLP that's of use in the real world is included in that recording. And the only difference between doing it, giving them the CD, that's the CD that they get at the end or they buy a mail order, or it's at the end that they're told to listen to once every other day for the next 28 days, so there's ritual and importance and all that, is that when it's one-to-one, -one, you know, you might say, actually, see yourself on the television set as you once were in the past when you were a smoker. You can make it specific. Obviously, if you're selling somebody a CD, or, or you don't want to be recording the session, you want something that's relevant for them to take away, phrase it like that, they'll fill in the blanks. Um, God only knows, other than the fact it is a placebo, it is ritual, there is repetition. It does tend to send people to sleep, whether that's through repetition, boredom, or hypnosis, or going to, whatever. I'm not really forced. The point is, I can honestly tell you, that is exactly what I have been doing, certainly for the past, I'd say I put that together now about 15 years ago. It's quite a long I think I first typed it up in about 1994. And that is exactly, other than doing some thing to amuse myself at the beginning of the session, but also to already have done it with the 0 to 10, the calibration and scale trick, as I call it, it's a visual anchor, a lower number, and some kind of social proof evidence. That is then what I used to say verbally to them, but now I'm just too lazy, so I'll get them to close their eyes and have the recording without the bit at the beginning. Although I have accidentally stuck that one on by mistake. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter. Because it will just confuse them. Confusion and disorientation, which is a pattern interrupt to the brain. And next thing they know, they're doing something and they've forgotten about that at the end that you've got the wrong bloody track on. And it said, you know, so they might be perceiving, what is the hell he's saying? Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you decide to listen to this audio compact this recording. Don't matter. Because they don't know what to expect. Perhaps you did that for a reason. <laughs> perhaps you did perhaps I was, you're the authority figure after all and you know if you think about that examine that every single thing I've talked about is in there self esteem, self image trust and it's worded in such a manner they can fill in the blanks now, I know you know all this stuff we said about igniters, draggers, well it's phrased in such a way that if they act like a mirror they're not going to take any shit, they're going to give it back and ultimately by so doing those draggers are going to tell them to fuck off anywhere. So the job of the, of the, where they should be saying Taratia is going to end up getting done. Because generally speaking, it's because people don't give back what they're getting, that they get stuck in that situation. So on some level, every single bloody thing we've talked about today is included in there. Um, and you know, you're heightening in that more because at the beginning you're going to have the social proof evidence or whatever. Social proof evidence or whatever that they need, um, so that the job's done. So tomorrow we're going to cover fast phobia cure, because that would be like your quick thing at the beginning of the session. But I still let them listen to the CMT afterwards. Uh, but fast phobia cure, as in the technique to get it done and over and done with, so you could have them within five ten minutes maximum, holding a big spider on telly or doing a bungee jump if they were scared of heights. We'll cover noisy therapy, the pain control technique, which is to do with anchoring saliva on your tongue. Sounds a bit gross, but we'll come to that tomorrow. Uh, we'll cover the bungee technique of Nick and Eva's, which is for like uh, craving substitution. So rather than wanting chocolate cake, you can turn it into drinking more water or something that's healthy. Uh, we'll cover specific approaches for weight loss, confidence, um, 
confidence, weight loss, stress, and uh, stress. Yeah, it should be the method. Smoking, weight, confidence. Stress. Stress, confidence, weight. Yeah, anyway, I've got them all down. Well <laughs> uh, but then we'll go into a bit more of the high level, shall we say, for if you're approaching drug addicts, alcoholics, blah, 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 or severe emotional issues, uh, including, of course, the laws relating to that, because there are laws relevant to this, duty and care laws, and criminal laws that you need to abide by. Not just a case of having insurance, but being registered with certain authorities. Cover all that, and then ultimately, by the end of tomorrow, it should hopefully all make sense. More so than it should do now. And you'll have more than enough tools to mix and match. Because you may notice, you know, in that, you know earlier on in there, I just did that seesaw induction thing, which you're going to learn tomorrow. And then what did I do? Essentially, get you just to do the thermometer thing with the mercury rise, and that one bit on its own. You can use that on its own, but I'm just putting it to complete mind therapy. If you're out and about in public going on TV doing a quick demo, you could just use the TV set to get rid of some of from the past. Or you could just, to give them more confidence, do the magic mirror and you feel good. You can do all the bits separately. They're all separate techniques. All I've done is bundle them all together so it kills 53 minutes of the session. <laughs> Seriously, that is really what it is. And that is probably, well, yeah, that is most of my career. But tomorrow I will cover the other bits. So on that note... Thank you very much for listening. I hope today has been worthwhile in some regard. And the White Lion Public Health, which is on Yorkshire Street, opposite Farm Foods, is where I will be probably in about 10 minutes' time when we get there uh, for a few drinkies, and then we'll be moving on, I don't know, but sometime between 8 and half past to just across the road to uh, Mia's Indian restaurant for something to eat of an Indian or non-Indian, because they do do English as well. Beautiful uh, Nature. And it's nice, it's not overly expensive, which is nice. Uh, so I'll, if you have got questions, please do ask me tonight. I'll either give you an answer or say, well, I'm covering that tomorrow. But if it's about what we've done today, then there probably will be. Uh, but please do ask me questions. Stuff. In fact, we've, well, we've just got a couple of minutes, but here and now, is there anything in particular that immediately jumps into your head that you want to bring up before or later when we're talking casually? I'll ask my other mental trainer calling what you were about okay. speed reading because I have a need uh -huh. to read a lot faster than okay. I do and I would really if there was any sort of visual technique or whatever he said he said given that I was a sort of audible person who takes information uh -huh. from what they hear speed read reading photo you know reading. yeah so called photo reading right that's now wrote on there we'll cover that in the morning yeah, yeah. I have a problem, and I had a client the other day had the problem. I don't visualise. Okay. So I have pro I, You can't I mean, visualise. Well, I don't see the thermometer, for instance. Don't think, I, you can't I, not have done. They didn't bother me, but... Yeah. I, you can't I not have done. It's down there. Anyone who says to me they don't visualise is talking bollocks. No <laughs> disrespect. Because <laughs> sorry, tell you, sorry, do, sorry. do you know what colour your front door is? Why? Are you positive of that? Yeah, because it's plastic. You, you're totally positive? Yeah. Right? Do you know what colour your car is? I don't have a car. I'm in a car, but it's not mine. Like Alright, do you know what colour that car is? Blue, yeah. Right. Visualising. How are you so positive? To, to recall that, for your memory to work, you have to have visualised. You may not consciously be aware that you have, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. Uh, you have done. Um, you know what a thermometer was when he asked. Yeah. Well, I know what a thermometer is, yeah. Yes, I, I, but it's I, a recognition. I, I but to it. know yeah. what a thermometer is, yeah. you have to have accessed that memory in your mind that knows what a thermometer is, yeah. and therefore you have visualised it. You, you know, you've Some people it think it's got to be a glorious technical or an image yeah. in your head. I can, I can, mem I can remember mm -hmm. a thermometer, but I, I don't see it going up. If you see to that. remember anything, the way your brain works, means you have to have visualised it. You can't remember something without visualising it. Yeah, I'll tell you that, but I don't think the... Sounds like I'm really dragging that. No, 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 no. Right. <laughs> but you can do it as a lift. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, a lift that starts at the bottom and it goes up to the top. Well, yeah. There's glass... Uh... When you talk about the mirror, mm -hmm. obviously I know where a mirror is, but I can't yeah. see myself in it. Right, but you heard the word. Yeah. Well, yeah, the words. I heard the words. I have no problem with that. And if I was to say to you now, you know, right, Imagine I mean, you're going into that. The reason I raise it is because I, I yeah. did have a client the other day who said I don't yeah. visualise, etc. etc. 
You know, when a client says that to me, and to be honest, I've covered that with the questionnaire at the beginning, but we'll cover that. Client questionnaire, which is tomorrow. The client, qu client questionnaire and pre-talk, because it also kills another 10 minutes of the session. So 53 minutes of that, 10 minutes of that is an hour and three minutes. Make him in a room, bit of rapport, it makes him like the hour and 15. Um, we'll already cover that. You just say, you know, and it does technically on the audio, although you may not have, you may have got so wrapped up on other things that you didn't hear it, but just actually say, it doesn't matter whether you're consciously, you may be consciously aware or you may not. You may see things clearly, you may not. Right near the beginning. But it says it so casually that it's not a big issue. But if someone then, just given that CD, was to listen to it and examine it and become more analytical about it, they'd hear it, because uh, it is said so. Yeah, I mean, I heard it. That's it is said I was, so, yes. Yeah. I was listening. Yes. Yeah. It so is said so, so almost quickly and flippantly that the idea is that you don't hear it. But then if you later go to become analytical about it, which somebody may do if they feel they're not visualised too well, they will then realise it's been said and think, oh, I didn't hear that before. Oh, well, it must be for a reason, so we're back into the ritual placebo and, and all that. But in the pre-talk, I will have also said, you know, some people, it's glorious technical. To other, it's just thinking the words. To other people, it's just thinking the words that are said to you. That's visualisation enough. So you're avoiding something being a problem before it becomes... That's how I get well, avoid it. Do it up from in advance before it comes an issue. Yeah. Rather than dealing with it afterwards. Any more? No? That all makes sense. Right, well we're, we are going for a drink and food and what have you. But I, I will just say, so I don't forget to mention it later. In the morning, again, it is a half past nine meet up for a ten o'clock start. Can we leave our things in uh, You can do, because they'll be locking up, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to be leaving my recorder and, and stuff, so... That's fine. Uh, thank you very much for being here, everybody. Thank you. Let's you enjoy the drinking. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. 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 Thank Oh dear. That's not going to make funny noises today, is it? That's hard. We've still got mine. And uh, what happens when you have curry and loads of vodka and pure, pure orange juice? Though? We're going to find it. Yeah. Mm. Must be every night of the week, isn't it? Right, again. Yes, we're going to have a look at the evil stuff. You know, I have to like it even stuff. It's really it's half a bottle of it to turn from a woman turns me from bust a blood vessel into Brad Pitt. Just half a bottle. Half a bottle, yeah. I always thought it turned me into You can't drink like these northern lassies, you know. And a full bottle turns you into an armpit. Full bottle turns me. Right. Teams. Back to. Uh, Reality. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Ah, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, right, well, uh, on the one hand, we have got lots of stuff to cover today. On the other hand, uh, as I said yesterday, even when we were doing lots of different demonstrations and explaining that personally I use certain things in different contexts just because I think, for me, it works better in that context. The truth of the matter is, uh, if you remember back to yesterday, arm stiff, fist, imagine it all going down. That can be used for pretty much, well, basically anything. As can CMT. As can any element of CMT, i.e. TV set. Logically, it's to get rid of stuff in the past because it's turning it all off and this, that, the other. Mirrors for installing new stuff, obviously, because imagine that. But you can use any of the elements on their own or mix and match them. Um, and that's pretty much what any so-called new course that comes onto the market is. It's somewhere from there, somewhere from there, whacked together in a different order and given a, a title or a name. Um, but if you sit back and look at it, it goes back to all that stuff we said yesterday morning. Now I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave it till a bit later because uh, the fast phobia cure on purpose. Because I know you're, you're having a bit of an issue in your own head, which some yeah. people do. I said, look, this may sound like I'm making it too simple. 
Um, well, you mentioned that, you know, if someone's had an issue for like 10, 15 years, perhaps longer, how can you possibly, in the space of like 10 minutes, it's gone. Out. It doesn't seem logical or possible. And in truth, it, 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 if you get into something like being having a physical and psychological addiction to some kind of substance, whatever, whatever, whatever that may be, alcohol, drugs, whatever, then no, you're not likely, and I'm going to say not likely, to be able to do it as quickly as that. The reason I say not likely is there are circumstances and psychological environments where some people do apparently have the miracle cure, uh, especially if they suddenly find God and somebody throws them on the floor and they start going... Mm -hmm. um, but it's still a ritual, it's still an authority figure. It, all right, there's a belief in a higher power. We're not going to go into whether God's real or not. But there are some environments where some people get so emotionally charged, and we mentioned emotion yesterday, energy emotion, get so emotionally charged that it does as quickly as that undo. And you see, if you think of it in terms of emotions, all things that become an issue or problem, uh, maybe not necessarily... Well, no, I was actually going to say maybe not necessarily like smoking, because if you take the stereotype of, and this is a stereotype, it doesn't apply to everyone, but the person, you know, in the school playground, everyone else was smoking, so eventually they had one just to fit in with the crowd. I was going to say that's not emotional, but it is, because the person wanted to feel as though they fitted in. And that happens, can happen with lots of little things, building up, to the point where it becomes so much that it builds in a wedge and the only logical solution, however illogical it may be when you step back from it, is to take on a behaviour or a belief system, uh, an attitude or a, a response to certain triggers, if it's a phobia, that if they were just operating without all these little bits of emotion that being got in the way, they themselves would say is ridiculous. And often with phobias, years down the line, people do try to step back from it and go, oh, this is a bit daft like, why, you know, why can't I do something about this? Well, the thing is, it's gone so long that they have no particular conscious recollection anymore of what were the lots of little things, or, more often than not with phobias, the one big emotional situation and by emotional I don't necessarily mean that you know it was something that had them sat down going oh, I can't live anymore not necessarily to that level but something that is for fear of using NLP winky winky terms has interrupted the pattern of their normal thinking or life and just gone poof, unexpectedly, it doesn't fit in with that which they necessarily believe or want to believe in some ways emotionally, or the situation surrounding it's emotionally negative. It becomes clearer later on when we do get to fast forward because more often than not, people are scared of spiders and not scared of spiders. Connected to a lie detector, they said they were, and they would probably pass the lie detector because they would genuinely, truthfully, and honestly, and sincerely believe they are scared of spiders. But they're not. Most people who are scared of going outdoors, I'm not scared of going outdoors. That's the label they're giving it, because that's the most obvious thing. But behind that, there will be other things that are the real reason for not wanting to go outdoors, or the real reason for not wanting to encounter a spider. Uh, which, as I say, will become even more clear when we do get to uh, fast phobia cures. Generally speaking, well, that's why I put it in sort of three camps. We have over here, which will be later in the day, let's say drug addiction, alcoholism, high-end emotional problems. You need to be a bit more severe with them. So we'll build up to that. Then that's a sort of mid-range, you've got phobias and fears. Uh, to an extent, perhaps, 
all CDs, obsessive compulsive disorders could come in this area here. Um, compulsions, it's not midsection here. Which, if you go about it in the right manner, yes, you should be able to sort them in around 10 minutes. Um, <coughs> yeah. It, it's all one good me saying this. The truth is, yeah, it still all comes back to what we covered yesterday. You've got to create the right psychological environment for it to be able to work in 10 minutes. The techniques as such should work, because it's not rocket science, if you literally just watched, and I've done this, like Paul McKenna's I Can Change Your Life was on um, Sky, I think it was, when it was rerun. And he did some on there, oh, I don't know. He's took that bit from the swish pattern. That, apparently it has got some fancy bloody name which a band would come up with. And I couldn't honestly tell you what that is. I know it was a bit from this, a bit from that, a bit from other. But it was in a different order that I'd not seen before. And it seemed to work remarkably well. So I encountered someone in the pub that evening who, you know, said they had a phobia. And it wasn't the conventional fast phobia cure, which is like set in a cinema, as you'll find out later. I thought, I'll look it, I'll try it. I'll just say what McKenna said in the way he said it, in the order he said it, and if I do that with enough conviction and appear that I believe this will work and give that intent, and obviously they've already seen the business card or whatever, so they already believe in the authority figure and all of us, well, that is here. It's the gay packer list gun. It is the gay packer list gun. You said you, you said you'd dye your hair. So, Hello, Stuart, he finally gets here. Day two. <laughs> what can I do? Sorry, folks. You can fuck off. No, 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 no. no. You can sit down. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> um, I'm interrupting my floor there. Sorry. Fast forward, yeah, do, 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 do. Yeah, so I, I was literally. Sorry, NLP are calling modelling, wasn't they? But I, I was copying, word for word, action for action, what I saw McKenna do on the telly. And it worked. But there again, why shouldn't it? The only reason, the only logical reason that it wouldn't have worked is either A, if it was all some bloody big setup for TV, which, all right, you might, as someone, if you don't come from a background of having experience doing this stuff, you might think, well, yeah, it probably is. It's for TV, there's more going on behind the scenes. Well, having worked on TV shows, having worked with people like Nick and Eva Speakman, who go live on and they just meet the clients there, I can tell you that, no, this can be done in real life, as long as you believe it can, and that's sadly, that's the biggest paradox of all of this. Everything we covered yesterday and everything we'll cover today, the biggest paradox of the law is, and this is also a lie, what I'm about to say, it's as truthful as I can get, but it's still a lie, because there is exception to the rule. But generally speaking, unless you believe that what you are doing is going to work for the client, it won't. Generally speaking, if you don't believe what you are going to do is going to work for the client, it won't. Because on some non-verbal level, you will naturally communicate in your body language or just, if you believe in energy, just by energy or voice, or it doesn't matter how. People will pick up that you are not totally confident in what you're doing. It is about transmitting that confidence. It is about believing that what you are going to do is going to work for that client. The exception to that rule is that, you know, sometimes, frankly, some people are so desperate that even if it was a three-year-old, it would be an exceptionally gifted three-year-old actually, but a three-year-old reading, reading a script in front of them, so they knew full well, and none of that stuff should have been in place that we talked about yesterday. Definitely there wouldn't be any authority figure thing going on, there wouldn't really be any belief system in place, there wouldn't, you know, because there's a script there, and there's a three-year-old kid. But, you know, some people, just the process alone would work for them. But majority wise, and you've got to work on the numbers game of the vast majority of people, especially if you're going to be 
doing this to me, money or whatever, or it's someone close to you, you've got to either A, truly, sincerely and genuinely believe that what you're going to do is going to work, or B, you better bloody learn how to become a bloody good liar very quickly. <laughs> Um, it's sort of one of those two options. I didn't have a fucking clue when I was 14 years old if getting them to close their eyes, keep their eyes tightly closed at all times, and then taking a script out of the briefcase and reading it, we're, we're going to work and help them. But I put myself in a position where it had to. Because I. I when we talk about marketing at the end of that, I got myself clients, and he immediately got the local media involved from day one. So the local radio station found me somebody to stop to stop him smoking. So it had to fucking work, because otherwise, a week or two later, this person was going to be air going, on air going, I'm still smoking, or, you know, I'm, I'm smoking twice. It, it had to work. Um, I didn't have a clue whether it would. I assumed it would, because my logic was that if this guy who sold me this correspondence course was charging X hundred quid for it, and he had these testimonials from people saying how they were earning money, that surely he could have only got those testimonials from those people if it worked for them. So if it worked for them, why shouldn't it work for me? And it, it, it is sadly, it is sadly the same thing. So you've got to, got to, got to believe. At the very least, you've got to create an environment where the person will naturally assume that you believe. Okay? So, um, in an ideal world, you would have an office, or if you're renting somewhere, you, you'd have more than just a briefcase with your CD in to give them at the end, you'd actually have a few bits with you, because you want to, when you get there, iron the room, put these few props out and about to make it look right. It's easier if you've got your own office, because you can have them up permanently. What are the props? Well, certificates, your qualifications, that say that you can do what you've advertised. Now, when you go away, you get a disc that's got 18 different certificates and qualifications on that are not worth the paper they're printed on. In law. Is that why they're on disc? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're right. It's because there is no legally, on any level, there is no legally recognised qualification for hypnotherapy, NLP, or related stuff in England. Anyone who tells you different is misleading you. It's bollocks. There is no government requirement uh, there isn't one. You can print out your own certificate. The only law that does apply to it is that it would be fraud to display such a certificate without having the knowledge and expertise to be able to put into action what that certificate says you can do. Well, I pretty much gathered that you can all talk over the weekend. I pretty much gathered you can all read. I pretty much gathered you can all pick things up and give them to people, e.g. the after session CD. So now with what we covered yesterday, frankly, if you were to just print out the complete mind therapy script, get them to close their eyes, read them, or, or actually record it first in advance so you don't have to read it every time, and give them the CD at the end, then you most definitely legally, because I'm the creator of complete mind therapy, you're definitely qualified to display the certificate saying that you are a qualified complete mind therapist. It's got an electronic signature on the bar. There's, there's diplomas for everything, we'll cover that more when we come to marketing. Uh, but there's ones that are specific, you know, smoking cessation specialist, consultant, you know, and all this shit. Just so it seems that you're particularly expert in certain areas. Uh, rapid phobia removal consultant. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll have all these on disc. Now, it's up to you. You can get crap paper, I suggest you go and get really nice diploma looking paper, print them out, some have got electronic signatures on already, 
You can, however, even the ones with electronic signatures, if you choose, when you print them out how you want to, email me, I will give you my postal address, you send them to me, I will then sign them and return them to you. But you will have them on whatever nature of quality of paper that you desire. A, my lazy cunt, and B, that way you can have it in keeping with whatever your colour theme of your office is or with whatever, frankly. Uh, you know, it, it, all it is is a prop. People expect to see diplomas in frames on the wall. You go to a solicitor, you expect to see law society and all this. You go to a doctor, you expect to see some on the wall. It's the same. They expect to see, because you're perceived as a doctory type, they expect to see bits of paper on the wall. So, you'll have loads of them. Do you think mixing up the pastel shades of the paper makes you look a bit more, a little bit of, you know... Whatever turns you on. Uh, probably. You know what? Probably. Going back to yesterday and the placebo pills and the fact that coloured ones work better, capsules work better, but multicoloured capsules work better. Than that. Going back to that, probably. So I've, got, yeah. I've got a couple of beige ones at the moment right. from Richard, so I thought maybe. Oh, you want some different maybe, colours? Maybe some yeah, so they stand there. Maybe blue and then a couple of white ones just yeah. to look a bit. It'll just psychologically look like you've got more. Yeah. Make sure you get nice frames. They don't have to be expensive. Wilkinson's doing them, they look good. They're not, someone picks them up, but they're not going to be, they're on the lot. <laughs> and you're probably saying, oh, it's wasting time on this. And actually, this is, this is really, really important stuff. Um, because it's all about creating that correct, correct environment. So yeah, the diplomas are on the wall. Um, ideally situated on the wall that you're going to be sort of sat in front, so when the client's looking at you, like at a lumpy, they're seeing these. I, I would have a shelf as well on the same set wall. You have a sign pointing at a certificate. <laughs> no, no, not quite that. Look at these. No, no, just a, bit, no, a bit more subtle than that. Uh, and I would also have a shelf nearby. Go to somewhere like the works, some Enderline bookshops. Buy any shape you see on psychology, uh, the mind, psychological medicine, self out. Just spend 20, 30 quid on shit. Or, or go on and buy. Just buy something, it doesn't matter if they're second hand, it looks like you've read them a lot, right? So just get a load of shit, don't bother reading them, because they'll be nothing of use in the real world. They'll contradict everything you've learned this weekend. But whack them on the bookshelf, because it looks like you've done your study, right? No, it's true, it's, it, this is true. You're right, you go on Amazon, a lot of books are a penny. Yeah, okay. so maybe two or three quid postage. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off two on psychology. They'll think, he's read all that. Well, all these tiff. Wait, this person knows what they're on about. And that is the environment you're needing to get the red into. You know? It is bullshit baffles brains. Uh, it, it, it does. Um, so, yeah, diplomas, books on shelf, ideally. Uh, in an ideal world, it doesn't matter, any old chair will do, but in an ideal world, the stereotypical leather recliner that people associate with the idea of seeing a shrink because it's so cliched on the television and in films. It's what people expect to see. I've got a lovely one off eBay. Right. A really nice leather, modern looking one. It's yeah. really lovely. And Freud, Freud, Freud used it, didn't he? He probably did, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, he came yeah. with it, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm a bit creepy by now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally. Yeah. Uh, a, you. Ford. Yeah. 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 Ford. Mentally, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, that is what people expect, rightly or wrongly. Provide them with what they expect fit in with their expectations and their pre-existing, mm. however correct they should or, uh, uh, you know, should or shouldn't be, beliefs and expectancies. And automatically they feel more comfortable and it's not like an ego boost to them that, oh, I was right, I thought it was going to be like this. It's already starting to make them feel like, because they were right about something. So that's good for them. self All these little bits, I mean, once you've got it set up, it's set up. But all those little bits that become immaterial in your head because, oh yeah, they're just on the wall, and that's that, do have a major psychological effect in creating the environment where that change can happen more rapidly because, wow, the person on the thread, all that sort of thing. 
The floor was on wall. Um, if you want a nice touch can be to have a notice board perhaps on another wall where you've got random photographs of people. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying <laughs> uh, I am not in any way saying that you should go on the internet and join a, a clip art or copyright free photo service. I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm not saying that you should go on a copyright free clip art or photo service and get uh, before and after photos of people that were elephant sized that now have lost weight. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm not saying they should be pinned to your notice board because when you start out you won't have had any real clients. I'm not saying that. And I'm definitely not saying tell the people that that's clients you've had before. <laughs> that would be fraud. That would be a criminal well, offence. Well, if you happen to get the photos because you were thinking about how your new advertising material was perhaps going to look as an example only, and they just happen to be pinned on your notice board for later reference, <laughs> and people chose to think of their own accord without you saying anything, that that was a previous successful client. But if they asked, it would be confidential. But yeah, well, I'm sorry, I've now discussed <laughs> previous clients. Um, then if people were to, you know, think that that was further proof and social proof of your ability, skills, talents and success, uh, and that was to lead them further along the psychological path to then, you know, what Obviously, I wouldn't know that you've done that. What happens if the client turns around and says, oh, that's my friend George, he's a model for the clip art website. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah. 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 and, and, and then you go, that's what will happen to you. <laughs> oh, all no. oh, right, cool. I was trying to speak to him, uh, ask him, is he, still, is he still as thin as this? Because, uh, you know, the treatment worked really well. <laughs> Notice I haven't said I've done the treatment. The treatment clearly worked well. It's, it's semantics. It's, it's, what we do it is a con. But it's a con, as I said yesterday, that actually bergs. So that contradicts it and says it isn't a con. It's a placebo. It's a placebo, but again, yeah. At the end of the day, there's a great film to watch, which, you know, everything I said yesterday will bring you to life, uh, albeit in a different context. And that's Leap of Faith uh, with Steve Martin in it. And he plays. Um, fraudulent evangelical healer and preacher. Are there any other kind? <laughs> um, this police officer in this town basically wants to expose it. He confronts him backstage. He's not been able to get any real evidence. He comes well, say backstage, outside the tent. It's like a really circusy revival thing. And he goes, Come on, just admit it. Just admit it. You're a fraud, aren't you? And Steve Martin goes turned round and he says, Maybe not these words, but essentially meaning the same. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But what's it matter just so long as the job gets done? And I won't go into too much more about the film, because you, get, you, get, I mean, you can bloody buy it on eBay and Amazon for that 3 99 on DVD now. It is a fantastic training that will teach you how to be an hypnotist more than spending a fortune on hypnosis training. Um, in terms of belief systems and the way people can very easily, you know, uh, misunderstand things or get convinced if something through repetition, Pete Batiesta said often enough, can make the way they think, believe, react, change. There's a film called, I don't know who the star is, but the front of the DVD covers have got a guy and a picture of a rabbit. It's called Harvey. Oh, James Stewart. James Stewart. James Stewart. That's it. Yeah, yeah, James Stewart. Six foot tall, white rabbit. Yeah. yeah. All I'll say is, watch it. It will teach you a hell of a lot that's relevant to this. It, 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 it's essentially a guy who can see a six foot white rabbit, and he's talking to it all the time. One of his family members essentially thinks he's lost the plot and he's trying to get him out. But ultimately, she's the one who ends up like getting sectioned. And they think she's the one who's mad. And it is all about belief systems, 
and the way you portray things, being confident, uh, confident, intent, the way you put things across, and how easily you can influence people. Um, that is a very. Um, they, they did have them in uh, county bookstores. Um, one of the works is called uh, for two ninety nine. I picked a copy of a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, it's all you've got to believe. Um, there's another one with all the bang your list things. Uh, on the gantry with uh, Bert Lancaster. He uses it to seduce women. Well, I'm not aware of that one. Based, uh, really <laughs> good Based on the group by Sinclair Lewis. I think it really does go to town on. Uh, right. What's on it the, called? The film's Alma Gantry and the book's called Alma Al Gantry. E L M E R Gantry. E L M E R Gantry. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Alma Gantry. And it's a film, but the film's only half the book, but the book really goes to town on it. Uh, this kind of methodology of uh, uh, evangelism and so Right. Cool. So, I, so I, I do truly believe that if, if, if you feel, for some reason, at the end of today, that you need more training before you do this, then... Well, me... Put that. And I told you yesterday, I'm going to offend everyone at some point, so fuck it. He goes... If you feel you need more training by the end of today, then fuck it, give up. You'll, you'll never be a fucking hypnotherapist. All it is is about getting off your ass and doing it. However, what you could do is watch the DVDs that I'm giving you to take away, which cover even more stuff and this stuff in, from different angles again. You could do that first, but I wouldn't suggest you go spending shed loads of money on other courses. Just because you've got fancy titles, or you're going to get another piece of paper, or, or perhaps that will give you the holy grail that will make everything fall into place. Because there is no chucking holy grail. I have spent over the years absolute thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pounds on courses, books, DVDs, just to prove to myself that it is this simple and there is nothing else to it. Um, on the one hand, I wish I'd wasted all the money. On the other hand, I can sit here and I swear blind there is nothing else to fucking know by the end of today. And even if you do watch the DVDs I give you to take away, to be frank, I'd probably just concentrate on watching the bits that are clearly about marketing and getting clients. Unless you feel you need a refresher of the stuff we covered this weekend. Other than that, I'd say just print out the CMT script, listen to the audio, because that's a great example listening to the audio when to put pauses in and change voice tones and all that. I'm not saying you have to do it word for word like me, but it'll give you an idea when to put pauses in and stuff. Chop and change some of the, I was going to say shit that we did yesterday, but we'll be saying, you know. So it's something you feel comfortable with. Create your psychological environment and you will as long as you don't concentrate on marketing, you will be able to make A, a lot of money, and B, actually, genuinely, sincerely help people. Because it is as simple as this. And it gets even simpler as today goes on. It's like that ironic. Now, the only thing we didn't explain yesterday, could we, this is sort of technically in the context of hypnotherapy, because we're going to call it NLP. Personally, I call it complete mind therapy. The marketing wise, it sounds like complete, there's nothing missing. It must be better than the other things. Um, but, it, 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 you know, if you did want to go down the hypnotherapy route, then people sort of may expect to be hypnotized, hence having their eyes closed. Uh, Personally, from a marketing point of view, you're probably better off not using the term hypnosis other than the keyword in the website. So it's like, you know, complete mind therapy has proven itself in many instances to be more effective than conventional hypnotherapy, NLP, and similar treatments. So you've got the keywords in. But then people who are scared by the idea of hypnosis are but often coming for treatment. And when they go, oh, oh, why do I need to close my eyes? Oh, it's just an eyes closed. Relaxation process. If their eyes are closed, arguably they're hypnotised. Well, the thing we didn't explain is, I'm going to show you literally, I'm only going to show you uh, the magic number, I think, three or four of them. There are loads more taught in my book, 
and some of the stuff you take away. There's loads more taught on the DVDs. There's loads more taught if you go on my YouTube account of the name Hypnotherapy Course, username. There's loads more inductions to put people under, or rather put <coughs> them in an eyes closed relaxation state. Um, but one that's particularly effective is, which we did yesterday, when basically I got you all to put your arms out in front of you, <coughs> back palm upwards, right hand palm downwards, and we did a thing that's known as the uh, light and heavy hands test, because uh, we got you to imagine that on your left hand, let her out, there was a pile of leather bound, let her out, library books, leather, uh, let her out, making your left hand, let her out, go lower, let her out. And then tied to the middle finger of your right hand, R, was a big bunch of red, R, helium balloons helping your right hand, R, to rise into the air, R. I made this dead easy to remember, you said. And your left palm is palm upwards, obviously, because it's easy to put library books onto that side of the hand. And uh, the right hand is palm downwards, because... Um, just because it's the opposite from the other, frankly. And I think it looks better in my mind, the idea of balloons being tied to that side. Oh yeah, and it, they're tied to the ring finger, because that's letter R as well. It's also easier to write that way, it's more easy to write. Yeah. Now some of the books will tell you to have them both the same direction. No, no, no. Always well, left down that way. Like this now as well, which yeah, is which is total bollocks. bollocks. <laughs> yeah. Do it like this, because ultimately the left arm will get tired because of the position you've got the muscles in. So at some point, their arms are going to go lower. So there will be some kind of gap. Now this used to be used as what they called a suggestibility test, to see if the person would make a good hypnotic subject. As you may have noticed yesterday, it doesn't talk in that term. I was doing interventions, we were getting people didn't even mention hypnosis. In fact, I said, I'm not hypnotising you. And then that proceeded to hypnotise people, arguably, because they have their eyes closed and doing stuff and getting a change at the end of it. Um, which, you know, people who were up here yesterday could be sat there. I know people who, who've done this before won't be, but there could be, you know, people sat out there in the audience thinking, the person said the number went lower because they didn't want to look that in front of everyone. Well, frankly, I don't give a toss. Uh, I don't have to be honest with you. Um, but the truth is, only person on this planet, where's he gone? Where's the plot? Yeah. The only people. It's not many people. <laughs> the only people that truly, genuinely, sincerely know for themselves is the client themselves. However, I think you know, uh, you know what doesn't tend to happen, and you will notice this more and more as you do stuff on people. For someone to have a quite clearly obvious visual, physiological reaction and change, doesn't tend to be something that occurs to somebody to somehow manage to fake. And frankly, it's very fucking difficult to try and fake anywhere. Actors go for many years of method acting to be able to immediately click in. It's, so you know, that does tend, you know, it's about you getting your own head around the fact that it is as simple as this. Um, so yeah, we did the light and heavy hands test. Generally speaking, this ends up getting knackered anyway, eventually. And it used to be a case of you tell people, open your eyes and look. Oh look, there's a big gap, which means that you're very suggestible. What I said to you would happen would. So they buy into it more. And then you go into something else. It'd be used as a convincer that what you said would happen has happened. Therefore, when you further say other things to them, there's less resistance. But everything else they said to me would occur has done. Which, if you think back, there were loads of examples of that yesterday. So the left hand, in, sooner or later, is when we get tired. So it doesn't matter whether this arm, the right hand, goes into the air at all. Because if you were using it in that manner, open your eyes, they see a gap, that's all that matters. Well, there's a gap. And you know what, with their eyes closed, as you may recall, I came round you and said, pile of leather library books, heavier, heavier, and I 
tap your hand, just to make sure it went down a bit. <laughs> and with the healing blades, I tapped upwards. This will become more prevalent in a minute, but that's generally what it was, light and heavy hands was a suggestion thing, you open your eyes, they see something visually that's real to them, that's a proof that what you suggested becomes real, so therefore there's less resistance and they're more likely to accept that further thing you say will be real. We then did what's known as the seesaw induction to get you all, and some of you were well flaked out. And then we just essentially did that thermometer visualisation, which was part of complete mind therapy. Zero to ten. So I'm not going to re-explain that. I think that sort of speaks for itself. Uh, the missing bit of that, obviously, is the seesaw induction, which is incredibly effective in therapy. We will, when Rob's told you about that, I will show you one or two other induction methods, as I call them, ways of getting people into that state that do not require people to move around around. Because I remember the question from yesterday. Um, and also, I'll show you a way of doing it where they don't require... It's hardly likely to happen, but they don't require to have any arms, legs or anything. As long as they can hear you, you're fine. Um, which just reminds me, you know, if someone is deaf, you can still hypnotise them. Because obviously they'll lip read you. The first time I hypnotised, I didn't know this person was deaf. But I was booked for a session years back. I do the induction. And I'm reading my script, so I've no reason to think that they're not hearing any of it. Because I didn't know they were deaf. And they'd been having a conversation with me. <laughs> I didn't know they'd been lip reading. And at the end, I'll do the awakening, and you're wide awake. They didn't come round, I thought, ah, they've either gone to no, I don't know, they've either gone for a normal kick, or, um. <laughs> yeah, no, no, or they're, they're asleep, you know, they're, they're, they're enjoying the experience. I thought, I'll leave them a minute or two. One, two, three, four, let them right and do all the kind of stuff we said yesterday. You're wide awake, and nothing happened. So in the end, I thought, oh. We'll just try the standard. I'm going to tap you on the shoulder in a minute. When I do, it won't bother you, worry or concern you. You'll understand me why they're able, rather than tapping, shaking. And they opened their eyes. Thought, cool, got them away. And they went, yeah, um. They actually said, when are we going to begin? <laughs> 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 yeah. And I said, um. It's all done now. We've done it. And they went, <laughs> I wish this wasn't true. They went, perhaps I should have mentioned I'm deaf. And I sort of was in stunned silence and thought, he wouldn't have heard <laughs> perhaps you should have mentioned that. <laughs> and I, I think at the time, much to, well, not to my shame, because they fell for it and believed it. I think I turned around and just basically came out with some complete and utter bollocks for now. Uh, oh, don't worry, it doesn't matter. The sonics, the vibrations of my voice, <laughs> <laughs> will have interacted with your aura, the energy field around your body. And you won't know how you know these changes are starting to take place, but they are. And they just looked at me like, because I said it so straight face, thank you. And they went, right. <laughs> How much is that paid me? As far as I know, bearing in mind that I was offering the money back guarantee, as far as I know, that person did stop smoking. As far as I know. And as far as I'm concerned, if they didn't ask for a refund, they did stop smoking. Which isn't as ridiculous as it sounds, given everything we talked about yesterday. Now, it wasn't me, but one of my students had a situation where the client rang up, and this was for smoking again, and said, yeah, I booked the session, he took the deposit, 50% over the form, they showed up, he brought them into the office, and uh, he said, you know, the balance is 125 quid, so we've now got the 250 quid. He said, do you want a brew? So the guy in the block said, yeah. We went, made him a brew, came back, the bloke drunk his brew, 
Frank was about to say to the bloke, now if you'd like to take the therapy chair over there, so when he's talking to them initially, getting rapport with normal chair, but then he gets them to move to the magic chair or the reclining chair, we do, because it's that. Now's the moment, now's the time for change. And there's also a metaphor there of changing from there to, you know? Um, so he's about to say, you know, take the uh, magic chair, the therapy chair, and the bloke goes, I really don't know how this works. And I really don't know what you've done to me. <laughs> but I just feel like I'm never going to smoke again. I really don't know how, how, how you do this, but I'm going to tell all my friends about it. <laughs> so Frank didn't bother to explain to him that he was supposed to be going on the magic chair. <laughs> He said, well, you know, he just went, so it was still a positive suggestion. He went, well, you do get a backup CD as well, which, <laughs> which I suggest you listen to. Which tells you how to make a magic cup yeah. of coffee. Which I, I, you know, I, um, I suggest you listen to once every other day for the next 28 days. So there's got the CMT going on. And this person referred them shed loads of claims. <laughs> <laughs> the strange thing, but perfect belief. The myth of Rahipno was born. But I'm not <laughs> never underestimate the power of belief. Because you know, people travel to Lords and stuff just to be able to buy a bit of water in a bottle that's come out because that might just be the thing that works for them. And for some people, it does give them a miracle or what they believe to be a miracle, the chances are that the majority of them, the issue they had, even if it was physical, had a large element of psychological, psychosomatic, or emotional baggage connected to it that was, at the very least, making it worse than it needed to be. And that is what they focused on as being, that is the solution. But the moment they're programming themselves, that's the solution, like the diplomas on the office wall, it's the books, it's you're the authority figure. It, don't underestimate the power of belief. It, you know, I suppose and this, this is the same with any and all of this. But the, the last little story I'll tell you about belief, which I think, and this is in the context of therapy, which I think really demonstrates how and this is a true checkable story, which really sort of demonstrates, I think, how someone who's had a long term, very long term, years and years problem, can be cured. Although you're not meant to use the word cured when you have time, but can be sorted. Even if it's what some people refer to as a high end psychological problem. So there's two of them. The first one, and these are both uh, relating to, these are not clients I've had, these are clients that Richard Bandley dealt with. Now I know I, I go on about NLP nonsensically, long pantomime, uh, and yes, I do truly believe it's just a bit, well, it is. They admit they model certain elements of, it, not this, this, put it together and maybe what it is. So none of it's particularly original. The order that stuff's been bought in, that's original, fair enough. But whatever I may say about NLP, that's not a personal attack on Richard Bandler, because the guy is a fucking genius. If at nothing else other than multi-level marketing and getting people to part with thousands of fucking pounds for what I told you yesterday. Um, but he is a genius and a master of bullshit. In the context of the way I've been referring to all this. Two examples, when he worked in his... He used to volunteer his services years ago to psychiatric, not job houses. People with high end issues, right? We're, we're talking. <laughs> right? Okay. Just that's an industry term. It's um, apparently this one individual who sort of went there every now and again, got, you know, sectioned and then related, when it behaviour got bad again, got sectioned. They'd go to bed at night and uh, wake up and was swear blind that could hear coming 
from the wall or the plug socket or wherever, the devil was talking to him. And keep in mind, and really screw this fucking head up. He's on drugs for it, you know, because that's their answer to everything. Give him some drugs. Chemically go them down. <coughs> right. Well, Richard Bandler, the genius he is, thought, and this, if you think about it, these two stories I'm about to tell you, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to explain or break them down, I'm just going to give you the stories, and I would hope you'll see how they're wonderful examples of everything we talked about yesterday in action, in a really severe circumstance. And he didn't do any so-called trance induction with any of this. So he goes to the guys, he goes, so who, you're like, who's on your real loony list? You've given up all upon type thing. And they go, devil man, room five. Okay. So he goes in, he sees devil man. I call him that because I, I, I don't know what his name was. He wasn't obviously called that. But he goes in, sees devil man. And uh, he heard, what's your, you know, what's your problem? And he's begging out he's a new doctor there, as opposed to just coming in from the outside. And Devil Man explains how at night, you know, he wakes up and the devil is talking to him from the wall. So Richard's like, I can understand how that is something of a concern. Yeah. I'm not quite sure why they put you in here, but I can understand. Yeah, it's a bit of a concern. And he just leaves the block. He sort of like, he doesn't try doing any so called therapy on him or any intervention. He just sort of finds out in the blog's words what apparently the devil says to him and all this crap. And he then goes to a local uh, PA sound equipment hire place and hires a couple of fuck off massive speakers, right, which get situated outside the building. So they're directly against the wall of Mr. Devil room 5, right, where there is windows up there, so we can't see the fucking speakers, but they're against the wall. And a microphone, and a lamp. And when it comes to night time and it's gone dark, Richard Bandler gets on the mic, he's got a voice shape, and he talks through this mic, which is going to boom through the speakers, through the wall, and this guy is going to hear this really dramatic voice going, I'm calling Peter. Right? Peter! And you can just imagine inside his. <laughs> That's not the voice and I'm here, what's going on? <laughs> Peter! Over here! Plug socket! <laughs> now listen, Peter! This is the fucking devil! <laughs> and it's come to my attention <laughs> that you're fucking lying! I have not been talking to you every night, Peter! But if you don't stop fucking lying, I will come and talk to you day and night, and I will ruin your life, Peter. This is your one and only warning, Peter. I don't want to have to come back. And I, apparently, Room 5 man was released from care the next day, and uh, was perfectly fine after that. Funnily enough, he never heard any voices at night time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can see the elements in that that we covered yesterday, why that would work. It became a, whatever the emotional issue was that made it happen, he made that a very emotionally charged experience to <laughs> overrule it. He rewired the pain and pleasure, he gave him motivation. <laughs> Second example is apparently, you know, so he, he's working at some other <laughs> cuckoo power. <laughs> and he goes, Who, who's like top of your list here then? And uh, they say, oh, that'll be, uh, that'll be uh, Jesus in room three. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, is that a stair chair? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's what I say about no. He, he, he just he, he, he really he, he wants to be called Jesus. And he goes, 
Yeah, Goswell. Give me his background knowledge. Say, look, some guy's called, I don't know what he was called, but we'll just say he was called Colin. And uh, he'd been an accountant for many years. Got a wife, couple of kids, dog. Pretty normal in every regard. But apparently one day, which clearly from his notes was around the emotional time of, you know, having got uh, made redundant, loads of shit going on in family, loads of emotional shit, suddenly he started telling people he was Jesus. And apparently been getting progressively worse to the point where he'd been sectioned, and he, he believed he was Jesus, and I've done for a number of years. So, Richard Bandler goes out, as he does, and he buys the necessary props for his plan, and costumes, and they are. And he goes back, and he gets uh, a couple of the uh, staff at the, the wardens at the uh, psychiatric unit to dress up as Roman gladiator type <laughs> people. Okay. And he says, don't come in, law, until uh, I call you. I'll tell you to. But just, just be on standby. And he goes and gets himself a work belt, armour, saw, some fucking wood. <laughs> and he timed this perfectly for... Uh, yeah, it's Good Friday, isn't it? He times it for Good Friday. And obviously Jesus knows it's Good Friday. He's coming out with his usual, <laughs> as he does every year, his usual, Hey, I died for you, this is the weekend, you know. Well, in Mark Richard, gets let in by a normal dress member of staff. And he goes, to Jesus, don't worry about me. And, which just goes over him. Jesus, as we'll call him, here and... At some point, obviously, he goes, my son, <laughs> what are you doing? And um, Richard over here goes, it's fine. We, uh, actually, we've got, um, we've got quite a lot in common, us. I'm a carpenter as well. <laughs> and he just acts as law, well, so this guy's buying into the lunacy of it, because, you know, he is Jesus. So he starts sawing. And then Richard walks up to him in the tent and says, can you just do us a favour, mate? Arms out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, he starts measuring it. And clearly, Jesus is thinking, what? <laughs> so he starts soaring, he measures the up. He says, do us a favour, mate. Uh, just lie down so I can measure you up. And sooner or later, Jesus goes, uh, what are you doing? And he goes, well, don't tell me you've forgotten, Jesus. It's good, it's good Friday, it's today. He says, come here, come here. He says, We've got your lovely spot on the hill over there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's where we're sticking you. Yeah? He says, so, uh, if you could just, and he's now nailed this together into it, but if you could just lie down, it would make it somewhat easier for me, to, you know, to fix you on that. And Jesus is like, clearly starting to think, no. <laughs> and uh, whatever wording or whatever, you, it's, you know, you're a bit mad, you are. <laughs> Get out of me. And he presses the panic button, does Jesus, because he wants security to get rid of this apparent nut job that's in his... <laughs> well, you see, the door opens, and in more, two Roman centurions. <laughs> and the captain just goes, oh, brilliant, I was about to call you. Can you get Jesus? We need to get him on this cross. Everyone's waiting to see him. We've got him a lovely spot on the hill up there. They go for him and bring him towards the cross, and as you can imagine, this happens before he gets laid down on the cross, he suddenly goes, let go of me, let go of me, you're all mad, I'm not Jesus, my name's Colin, I'm a captain, I need to go up to my kids, and my wife. And after being checked out afterwards, the thing is, he was cured. He never once, ever again, thought or acted or said he was Jesus, and he was allowed to go home, and his life was back to normal. And yet for years, he'd been on weird medication. But something highly emotionally charged removed all <coughs> and overrided and changed the what emotionally charged caused the thing in the first place. If it gets instilled with emotion, it needs some level of emotion to release it. 
which ties back into everything we've talked about yesterday, pain and, and, and pleasure. And I hope you, you know you take on board those couple of stories that I have uh, um, appropriated from Mr. Bandler because they do sum up that you know it fundamentally doesn't really matter what you do, how wacky it is. Just as long as the scenario is done in is believable. Now obviously he didn't go in there in the scenario of being a therapist. But it was something that was believable and the guy bought into in that context. It's about context, the individual, common sense, and making up bullshit off the top of your head. So with that in mind, before the uh, morning break, uh, I'm going to get Rob to, because the one missing link from yesterday was the seesaw induction. I'm going to get Rob to explain that to you, and then after the morning break, I'll teach you a couple of other inductions. Then we can move on to an easy therapy pain control, client questionnaires, past phobia cure, speed reading, I've got that all over. Uh, past um, life regression. Past life, thank you for reminding me about that. Past life regression and other demo techniques that can be used for like addictions and all that kind of stuff. We've shed loads more of them, but as I do them, you'll see that they just work for the same reasons. So. I'll hand you over to Mr. Robert the Temple. Hey! I'll have, uh, I'll have a seat, it was a late night. Um, <laughs> right, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, obviously you experience, normally when we teach people this, uh, they haven't experienced it yet, obviously for the most part you experienced it yesterday, so you know what it feels like and you kind of know from an eyes closed point of view what actually takes place, but not from a, not from a, a doing it point of view. But I want to explain, talking about making a bullshit on the spot, I want to explain where this came from, because I think it speaks volumes about what Alex just told you, and uh, I think it's really important. So what happened was, uh, obviously I'm, I am living as a stage hypnotist primarily, and do therapy work when I can fit it in. Generally I tend to pass it off to other people. Um, but what happened was, for years and years and years, very mind I did my first show when I was 16, which was nearly seven years ago, and I have been working the summer seasons abroad every year in Greece. So in 2008, I was across in uh, Greece, it would have been in the middle of July, and uh, I was doing shows, and we were doing between one and, show, one and two shows a night, four or five nights a week. So it's quite hefty, hefty stuff, and it's a two-hour show. Uh, straight through, no interval, nothing. So it's, it's a lot of work, you do a lot of shows, you hypnotise a lot of people, and uh, have a lot of fun. And there was uh, a, a girl out there who was working my sound system for me. She was doing the technical side of my show while I'm on stage. So every time I want a piece of music, she presses play. Every time I want that piece of music to stop, she presses stop. And she was sort of stood in, the, um, in the, the, the DJ box at the side of the stage. And we were in this big venue in a lovely little resort called Kefalos in the island of Kos. And um, it's a massive bar, it's called Sydney Bar, it's huge. It's a big outdoor place and it was rammed. You could not move this night. It, it probably, if there was a legal capacity, it was over it. There were a good couple of hundred people in, crammed into this little space. And I, you know, I was ready, it's going to be a really good night. Now the induction that I always use, I don't know if Alex is teaching it or not, uh, is an induction called the fallback induction. Now, when I, uh, and I literally used this for years, because it was the first thing I learned, it, it looks fantastic on stage, and I've just used <coughs> it for years, since I was 16. Anyway, uh, Sammy at this point had seen me do several hundred shows, uh, and I was stood at the side of the stage, and just as my introduction, she pressed play, just as the introduction was about to play, she said, I'll tell you what, I dare you to do something different. I said, what do you mean? Bear in mind, it's now giving me the big dramatic introduction before I go on stage. I've got about 30 seconds before I have to be in the middle of the stage. And she said, just, just doesn't matter, just do something different, push. So, okay, crap. so I'm now on stage, and I've now, I'm now thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm regurgitating the spiel that comes out of my face at the beginning of the show. And while I'm coming out with all this, that's just sort of scripted, I'm thinking about what she's just said. And I think, well, I was like a challenge, all right, I'll come up with something new. So what I thought was, uh, I mean, I, I, the way it tends to work in a show environment or in therapy is that you do your opening, your opening waffle. Then, I, then in, in a stage environment, I get volunteers. Obviously, in the therapy context, they're already here, but you get volunteers. Then I do a suggestibility test, which was always to lock their hands together. You stick their hands together. They believe they can't get their hands apart. And then I would do the fallback induction. And that was how it all, and then be straight into the routines. And that was how it always flowed. So I thought, well, the easiest way for me to make this look like I've just done something totally different is I'll cheat a little bit. She's only ever seen me do the locked hands as a, as a suggestibility test. 
So the easiest thing for me to do is just to use a different suggestibility test. So I'll do the light and heavy hands, which I haven't done for years, but she'll believe that I've just made that up on the spot because I'm the only hypnotist she's ever seen and she's only ever seen me do this. So if I do that, I'll look like I've just made that up. So we got it was somewhere 11, 12, 13 volunteers, something like that, which is actually wider than the stage if they sit in a row. So I put two chairs out on the on the floor on either side of the stage as well. So a big long line of people on different levels. And um, so I, they're all sat there in their chairs. I did my normally, o normal opening spiel, but instead of going into uh, the locked hands test, I said, right, everyone put your hands out in front of you. And I did the light and heavy hands test as Alex did it yesterday. Uh, you know, leather band library books pushing the left hand lower, red heaving balloons rising, because that's how I learned it from the DVD set of his when I was 14. So that's how I've always done it. So I did that. So now you've got sort of 11, 12, 30, something like that, people sat like this, all with different degrees of, of, of this. So some of them are like this, some of them are like this, some of them are like this. And I sort of looked at them and went, oh bother, because I've put myself in the spot now because I don't know what to do. I don't have, I don't have anything that's going to... You don't need a guinea pig. I don't have anything that's going to get me from a load of people in this position, so I'm stood in front of them with a the mic, uh, I don't have anything that's going to get a load of people in various degrees of this into a state of trance quickly. The only thing I could really think of would be to now undo the fantastic work I've done by saying, right, open your eyes. Oh, look, that's amazing. Wow. So there's a, there's a convincer for you. But now when I say put your hands down and I get them up and do an induction, I've kind of got to start from scratch again. Where what I, what I realised was in my head, because they're like this, their imagination's already going, they're already, and I, as I looked across them, I started to see, it depends what your belief is, but I started to see a couple of the classic signs of hypnosis, like rapid eye movement and things. And as I looked across, <laughs> <laughs> I said rapid eye movement, not psychotic. Anyway, I looked, across the, um, I looked across the line and saw them all sat there, and I thought, sod it. Anyway, and I just literally went, right, I'm going to go for it. Because I figured, uh, because to a certain extent, hypnosis is a numbers game anyway, I figured that if you've got 13 people in a row, even if I could keep three or, three or four of them, I could get away with doing the show. So I thought I might as well just take a gamble. And just on pure luck alone, and the fact that I got balls of steel, and if anyone's seen the show, they'll know I have. I got balls of steel, I'll just get away with something. So pop your hands out for me, and I'll show you what I did. It's what Alex did yesterday. I'll break it down in a minute. But I just came along and I went, without looking like I'm making it up, just went. And I just went along the line and did that. Nice. And or every single one, I can't remember how many were, 11, 12, 13, something like that. But all of them ended up on stage for the entire show, or sat on the side of the stage for the entire show. And at the end of it, I sort of went, shit, I'm onto something here. And afterwards, talking to her, she said, you didn't make that up on the spot, because it looked too perfect to have possibly just come up with it. So anyway, I, well, I did effectively. But I'm, unfortunately, I'm not arrogant enough to believe that nobody's ever done that before. I just went, somebody must have come up with the idea. Because effectively it's just, well, or something very similar. It's just a light and heavy hands test which is older than the hills. And then done something on the end of it. And it wasn't until in January 2000 and last night. Last year. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. When I showed it to him at a hotel in Manchester at a different se uh, seminar. And um, actually, do you want to explain what your theory on that was? Well, I was just in the bar. And he said, oh, I've come up with this new idea. Can I put a running patch on? Uh, yeah, you can, but oh, fuck off. <laughs> no, 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 it's the Morton Charles. Believe me, the number of times I get told there's something new. And I, 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 people bring books out, and it's like, if you did your research, there's books from like 1980, 1890 on mesmerism and stuff that's got that booking in. You've not come up with anything new. And in truth, neither's wrong. But what he has done, because I, I said, I'm going to what happened first, but ultimately, like Nevi Adams' test, Holders the hills, although most of the books teach it wrong, because it should be that way around for the reasons I explained. Arguably, the M position as the arm is pulled down is very similar to the position when you do a certain manner of handshake uh, induction. Uh, and the idea of suddenly exchanging the movement of the hands like a seesaw is something they don't expect, so therefore it's a pattern interrupt, NLP would call it. So it's like a pattern interrupt in induction. So arguably, all of it, none of the elements are new, but not in any book anywhere, and believe me, I'm a sad sod. I have read books, I've done it. It hadn't been released. And ultimately, we have ended up releasing it on DVD, and people who are probably swallowed every book on the planet on hypnosis 
have given it great reviews going essentially saying the same as what I've just said. Well, none of the components are new, but the way it's been put together and the effectiveness of it, and that it is actually, they've confirmed that it is. Um, anyway, so I wasn't expecting it to be on any way, shape or form, anything at all impressive. So, yeah, go on, you what, my left hand out in front of me. You're doing my fucking version of light and heavy hands test on me wrong. You learn off me, get real. So I'm like sort of semi, I'm listening here, and, but I'm trying to be nosy on other things. I'm thinking, right, okay, I'm going with it. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor. <laughs> uh, opening, opening my eyes, not because I've been hypnotised around, but opening my eyes, going, what the fuck? Because that moment had come where suddenly everything's going on, and I actually lost my balance because I wasn't expecting it, and went it's on, on YouTube, the floor. actually. Yeah, the actual clip's on YouTube, isn't it? Royal gets zapped by the temple or something. And I'm just like, what the frigging... What, what did you do there? Because obviously I had my eyes closed. And he told me, so I went, he told me, I was like, fucking genius. Because you don't even have to tell them you're going to hit it. It's just genius. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about how I frame it in a second. And I was that impressed that I, it was like the Remington, is it Remington? Shaver Athens. Yeah. yeah, I was so impressed that I bought the, <laughs> bought the rights to it. Give me a large amount of money. Give me a large amount of money and uh, yeah, own the copyright on it. Yeah. So, it is. what happened was, uh, so, so I showed it Alex, Alex liked it. We eventually said, right, well, you initially said, can we teach that at a seminar? And yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we eventually, we negotiated a large sum of money and he put it out on DVD. Well, we put it out on DVD. And it, again, as you mentioned, it's had really good reviews. And since then, it's now become the only induction I ever use. Um, I did it on my DVD. Uh, birdcage. Yeah, I did it on my DVD. Actually, I did three fallbacks at the birdcage just because they look very impressive. And I watched the DVD for the first time the other day. My girlfriend forced me to watch it because I, I just refused to watch it. Um, I might learn something. Um, <laughs> and. Um, she forced me to watch it, and I remembered that I'd done these three fallbacks. So I don't know how, there must have been about 20, maybe 15 to 20 people on stage at the start. Did the seesaw on most of them, and three or four fallbacks. And the fallbacks, nobody, none of the fallbacks went under, and all the, well, pretty much all the seesaw people did. So I think that said something <coughs> in my head that, that I was on something a bit more. So ever since then, it's become the only induction I ever use in any show or therapy environment. A lot of people I've spoken to said they've used it in a therapy context and it's worked very well. I think you probably use it. Oh, yeah, on yeah. On therapy sessions you do now. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I do for sure. And for sure, yeah. So, so it, 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 it really, yeah. Yeah, so, and that's, that's the <laughs> yeah. reason I've stopped doing fallback because the last end up like it. Anyway, um, so effectively, uh, I mean, as Alex said, there's nothing individually new about it, but I've just found that it's the lowest... I don't, I, I'm not keen on this thing, people go, it's a zero resistance induction, you know, no, everybody goes under, and that's never the case, but it's, it's the, probably about the lowest resistance induction I've ever come across. Um, so this is how I would do it in a show or a therapy context, but obviously they're, they're the same, but I'll do it as if it was a therapy client, I suppose. Uh, right, okay, so we'll go from scratch. Okay, what I'd like you to do for me, and I, I, this, I'm now going to flip into script mode and you'll hear what I'm about to say, and if you've seen me present this before, you'll know it's word perfect every time. And I suggest you try and sort of make it your own, but keep it as close to this as you can. I've tried to chop out as many words as possible, so this is the shortest it can be. Well, other than the fact there is a clip of me doing this somewhere in Rochdale on a complete stranger, and it took about 40 odd seconds, I think it was. 47 seconds from me, you know, to... Literally, Alex said, right, I'm going to... Oh, yeah, you were one of them, actually, but I had met you once. But there was a guy I'd never met before, and Alex went, right, I'll film this on your phone like, while I just look like I'm sending a text. You go and do it on him. So I literally just went up, hi, my name's Robert Temple, I'm a hypnotist, can I hypnotise you? And he said yes, and I said, right, do this, and I did that. And from the moment of me going, hi, my name's Robert Temple, to him waking up and me being able to stick into things was about 40, 40 something seconds. 47. 47 yeah, seconds. 47. It's on YouTube, and it's probably on your disc as well. Uh, it is actually, yeah. 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 Right, so uh, this is how it works. Uh, right, I'm going to count from one to three. On the count of one, I'd like you to place your hands out in front of you like this. On the count of two, I'd like you to take your left hand and turn it palm up. And on the count of three, I'd just like to close your eyes and listen to every single word that I say. Do you understand that? I do, yeah. Okay, I'm just confused me. a little bit, anyway. What? You're what? just confused. Carry on. Okay. I'm just confused me. I thought you were going to no, no, no. Okay, uh, on the count of one, pop your hands out in front of you for me like this. I'm just doing it as if it was therapy, yeah, you know, okay. so I'm cutting out all the gags. Yeah. Lovely, excellent. Take a nice deep breath in. And let it out. Fantastic. Right now, on the count of two, take your left hand, turn it palm up for me. Fantastic. And on the count of three, just close your eyes. 
Okay. As you sit there in your chair right now, listening to the sound of my voice and the sound of the music that would ordinarily be playing, I'd like you just to imagine that on the palm of your upturned left hand, I'm going to place a very heavy pile of leather-bound library books. And these books are going to slowly start to get heavier and heavier. They're going to slowly start to push your left hand gently down towards your knee, towards the floor, towards the very core of the earth. As every second that passes by, every breath you take, every noise you hear, every word that I've said, every thought that you think, we're going to place ten more heavy leather-bound library books onto the palm of that left hand. And at the same time, I'd like you to imagine around the middle finger of your right hand, I'm going to tie a bunch of bright red helium balloons. Now these balloons are bright red and full of helium, and those balloons are going to slowly start to get lighter and lighter. They're going to slowly start to pull your left hand higher and higher towards the sky, towards the rainbow, as with every second that passes by, every millimetre, every inch that your left hand gets heavier and moves down, your right hand will continue to rise and lift into the air, lifting and rising, rising and lifting up higher and higher. As your left hand gets heavier, your right hand gets lighter. Now in the next few moments' time, I'm going to come round and touch you gently on the back of the hands. The very second I touch you on the back of the hands, it won't bother, disturb or distract you. It'll simply serve as a sign and a signal to relax. Your hands and your arms will drop down into your lap. Your eyes will remain tightly closed and your heavy head will just fall forward or to one side. You'll allow yourself to enter a lovely, relaxing state of trance. Once again, the very second I touch you on the back of the hands and command the word sleep, as quickly as that, your arms will drop down into your lap. Your eyes will remain tightly closed, your heavy head will fall forward or to one side, whatever feels most comfortable for you. As for now, your left hand gets heavy, your right hand gets lighter, just allow yourself to... Relax. And that's pretty quick, really. Uh, open your eyes, pretty quick. So if you imagine within a, a therapy context, most therapists that I've come into contact with, they spend you know a good 20 minutes doing some sort of progressive relaxation induction. I'd do that with a quick deepener and then spend the rest of the time on CMT or something else. Um, so let's break down the actual what's gone on. If you notice, I never once said the word, I'm going to hypnotise you now. There was no definite... When I did the when I used to do the light hand, sorry, when I used to do the locked hands test, there was a very definite all these people stood in a row or a therapy client would be sat in a chair with their hands locked like this. There was a very definite moment of right, now you had this this was a, this, that was framed as a test of your imagination to see how, how your imagination works. So as soon as the right, I can't get my hands apart, they're in this position. There was then a very different definite transition from that was me proving how good your imagination was, without right, saying it. That, that was me proving how good your imagination was, now it's time to hypnotise you, come over here and I'll do the drop back. And that was very much a, a suggestibility test and that was very much an induction. With this, all I tell them is, we're going to do a little test of your imagination, see how your mind ticks. And I just don't tell them that we're now going to make a transition, they just wake up an hour and a half later and find out what happened. Um, so basically, and that's what I quite like about it, you never actually have to say, this is hypnosis. You just begin with the test of the imagination and then just spring it on them when it's too late to think about it. In a moment, I'm going to touch you on the back of the hands. When I do, you give them the, the cue to drop in the trance. So the actual move itself, let's assume that you've done that because that's, that's the easiest bit. Just talk at them until it goes down. Alex mentioned actually tapping their hands to make sure they separate. I, I'm a bit more violent than you know I me. Mean, I, I just push their hand there. But people don't know this. You'd think an audience would go, they're just pushing their hand there. Don't they have move. Even though I'm really fucking obvious about it, there's no point in being so. So their hands have moved from one way or another. That one might not have gone up, but it doesn't. We've gone into great detail on this in the past, haven't we, about how, how it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the, the, there's a five hour always... DVD set on this one ten. <laughs> no, well, it was meant but to be. But you walk away with a copy of it. But it was always it was meant, meant to be. Uh, it, it was always just meant to be a case of, it, basically, it doesn't matter, their hands will always separate the way we've worked it out now. So basically, once they're in this position, they'd have their eyes closed, and all I'd say at this point is these exact, more or less these exact words. In just a moment, I'm going to come round and touch you on the back of the hands. The very second that you feel me touch you on the back of the hands, it will bother, disturb or distract you. It will simply serve as a sign and a signal to relax. Your heavy hands and your heavy arms, and they will have damn heavy hands and heavy arms. If you remember from yesterday, by this point, you, your arms are bloody heavy. So they go, yeah, got heavy arms. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear it? yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'll hurry up. Uh, your heavy hands and your heavy arms will drop down into your lap. Your eyes will remain tightly closed, and your heavy head will fall forward to one side. I'm just telling them what to do. I'm just telling them that's what's going to happen, and they go, all right, that's what's going to happen, in their head. So, uh, so I say it twice. The very second I touch you on the back of the hands, it will bother, disturb, or distract you. It will simply serve as a sign and a signal for your heavy hands and your heavy arms to drop down into your lap. Your eyes will remain tightly closed, your heavy head will fall forward or to one side, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Now I repeat it. Once again, the very second I touch you on the back of the hands, 
You didn't sleep, so I was just trying to sleep. Go for your hat, heavy hands, your heavy arms drop down into your lap, pop down for now. Your heavy hands, your heavy arms drop down into your lap. Your eyes will remain tightly closed. Your heavy head will fall forward to one side. And then I had this burn the second time round. I said, the very second I command the word sleep, you'll allow yourself to drop down to a lovely, relaxing state of trance right now. I, then the movement is simply this. This hand goes here. This hand goes here. And I'm not grabbing his hands. They are barely touching. Okay, I mean really barely touching. But they don't, they, they, these hands are so painful for them by now, not painful, but sore by now, it doesn't take any effort at all for me to move this. So I very, very lightly push this hand down and this hand up, so they've rapidly swapped places. That's like a seesaw. Like a seesaw, yeah. We should have called it that. We should have called it that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, Alex came up with the name actually, and then this, so this is now on their lap, which is where I told them it was going to be. Then this hand comes across and down, but it comes across diagonally this way and sort of bumps into them that way. So, uh, if you put your hands in again, so it becomes, so as soon as I say that, that, that I tell them what's going to happen, I say the very second to command the word sleep, you allow yourself to drop into a lovely relaxing state of trance. That's the first time I've actually told them they're about to be hypnotised and now it's too late for them to do anything. Because there's not, now only a few seconds before I do it. I now say, as for now, your left hand gets heavier, your right hand gets lighter, they've no idea I'm coming because they've got their eyes closed. As your left hand gets heavy, your right hand gets lighter and just allow yourself to sleep and it's done. And it well, so the process itself, the induction itself, so that's just a suggestibility test, the, the induction itself takes what, three, a second, two seconds, three seconds? So the first bit should be like, effectively the pre talk the suggestibility test and the build up for it. But the induction itself is literally swap over and then that hand goes down. Now I think what's really important about this, if, if you all just pop your hands out like this for a second and pretend I've just done a light heavy hands test, so they're already separate. So if you move your hands apart a bit, so imagine you're all quite, that's it. Now effectively, I'm going to show, the only reason I'm doing this, I think it's important you realise how light this touch is, because it does make a difference. When I've done this with a heavier touch, it's not been as effective. This is how light it needs to be. Anything heavier than that is too heavy in my opinion. But when the hands are are that dead, when the hands are that dead, it takes no effort at all. It's literally just like stroking the back of the hand in the direction you want it to travel. I don't know if you teach them to fall back on that. Yeah, well, we'll be after break. Right. When he teaches the fall back, you'll see something that I imagine you're going to talk about about running yeah. your, jet, your finger gently backwards on their forehead and again Alex will talk about it then and effectively it's that kind of light guiding gentle touch that just kind of wants them to that makes them their hand just want to go in that direction but you might that now, but effectively as I said so their hands are like this left hand lower right hand rising and then you just swap them over rapidly and then pull this one down and across their body which naturally pulls them in anyway because you just can't do anything else naturally pulls them in anyway and then, I mean, sometimes they fall on the floor, like Alex did the first time I did it. Sometimes they fall in, like so what I call fall in half, which is where they go into that sort of <laughs> position. Yeah. That's a marshmallow, yeah. Anyway, they go into that sort of flumped <laughs> position. Um, I think that's basically all this cover. I mean, we got into the, the sleep. The sleep one is uh, the, the, when you say the sleep. Is, is important when I first it, started doing it, and I think it's this way on the DVD actually, when I first started doing it, all I ever said was, in a moment I'm going to touch in the back of the hands. When I do, it simply serves a sign signal. If your hands drop down to your lap, your eyes will remain closed, your heavy head will fall forward to one side, and then I'll repeat it. I then, about a year ago, added in uh, so that it now flows. In a moment, I'm going to touch you on the back of the hands. The very second I do, you'll instantly feel it instantly serves a sign signal. If your heavy hands, your heavy arms drop down into your lap. Your eyes remain closed, your heavy head will fall forward to one side. Once again, when I touch you on the back of the hands, it will serve as a sign or signal for your heavy arms to drop down into your lap. Your eyes remain tightly closed, your heavy head will fall forward to one side, and the very second I command the word sleep, it will allow yourself to drop into a deep level of trance. I think what happened was, it was generally quite successful anyway, and I thought, and I'm not even telling them that they're going to go into a trance here. I'm not telling them, I just tell them that they're going to go into that relaxed position where their hands will be down, their eyes are closed, and their heads forward. That's all I've told them. But at the same time, so I figured if it keeps, if it keeps as many people hypnotised in a stage environment as, as, as it did, and in therapy, as it did, without me telling them they're going to go into trance, because generally most inductions involve you at some point going sleep at the end of them. 
for the most part, because they need that kind of, they don't need it, but it's, it's handy to give them that kind of trigger as if to go, oh, so it's not just messing about now, I'm actually supposed to be hypnotized to sleep. It's what okay. unconsciously goes on, in my opinion. So I realised if I added that in, then it would give it a, make it lower resistance. But I mean, I think, I think that's about as much detail as, I mean, the full detail, there's five hours of details on yeah, the DVD. Yeah, well, it's on the, it. yeah, the DVD you'll walk away with, yeah, if you wish to uh, sit well, well, ultimately, that will sum up. That sums it up pretty much. Anything else that you need to talk about? You have a. If I think bit, about, we'll, we'll do it after the break. It is time for. Uh, it is time for a sort of ten minute break. Um, if you got any questions, in the yeah. break, you can So uh, have a brew, Lou, and uh, anyone want to say hello to my Ashley Boo Boo? She's she's out there in the foyer. Come to say hello to everybody. Sorry.